So considering another exam question on our audio break equations, we are going to notice that uh, now we have got uh, the idea of how to answer these typical questions. So they've got a 10 mark question that we are going to consider on question number six. Solve for the unknown in the following equations. So we are given, uh, that is the first part there, to consider solving of the unknown. All right, let's consider the first part on 6.1, where we are given uh, 15 plus A is equal to a 28. So there we need to solve for A. As you can see, that is just one mark there. So we can just take our 15 to the other side of the equation. Remember that the moment it crosses the equal sign, it becomes a negative on that side. So meaning to say we are remaining with A, which is equal to 28 uh, minus 15. So in this case, we are having 28 minus 15. And this is going to give us what? And this is going to give us a 13, which is the value uh, of A satisfying our equation. So you can substitute the value of A there in place of A to make sure that this is going to balance. Uh, if does if it does not balance, then it means your A is wrong. So it must give it must have the same part that you are given. If you substitute the value of A, which is 18, you must obtain a 28. That is 15 plus a 13 is equal to 28. 15 plus 13, that's 28 exactly. That's a 28. So an equation you can actually. That's a, that's a question that you're supposed to be very sure about that your answer is correct because you can test that. All right, so we talked about that. Uh, let us just consider the other part, 6.2. 2f minus 10 is equal to a 40. So then we can consider our equation. Uh, what is it that is affecting our equation? The minus 10 affecting f. But how? How are we going to get rid of that minus 10? So you can even take it to the other side of the equation. Remember the concept. The moment a number, a term, jumps the equal sign, changes the sign. So it will be a plus there. So this is equal to 40 plus a 10. Take note. It was a negative. Changes to a plus. So meaning to say uh, 2f is equal to 40 plus 10, which is a 50. There is a multiplication there. So to get rid of the multiplication, simplifying the reciprocal of this, which is over 2, just divide by a 2. So my, meaning to say that is going to be our f, 50 divided by 2, which is 25. So again, you can consider substituting this value to test your answers, like I said before. Uh, let's say 6.3. We have got a bracket this time to consider 2 into the bracket of x plus 1 is equal to a 10. So this one, we have got uh, different ways that we can actually answer this question. You can consider to say there is a bracket. Let me distribute this by two, one that is outside of the bracket. Then you multiply every term, two times x, which is 2x. Then you multiply again this one by two, two times one, which is a two. This is equal to a 10. We are back again, just like the normal case that with the normal part that we had before this is it like what we had on question this on first question where you need to take the two to the other side of the equation so the moment it jumps the sign the equal sign it will be a minus there so when you say this side we're going to have a minus it was a positive so 2x is equal to 10 minus 2 and what is 10 minus 2 that is 8 divide by 2 since we've got a product so x then was going to be a 4 all right so as we can see uh, that is what you're going to have. Like I said, you instead of uh, us expanding or distributing this bracket by a 2, what if we just divide by this 2? Because that's the product there. You're multiplying. So the inverse, divide by 2, divide by 2 both sides. You can even cancel this. That means we've got a 1. 1 times x, which is x. 1 times 1, which is 1, is equal to what? 10 divided by 2, which is a 5. So you can even solve for x. Just transpose, take this 1 to the other side. It's a plus. On the other hand, it will be a minus. So meaning to say x will be equal to 5 minus 1, which is a 4. Same value of x that we 
obtained them. So you can use either way. Get rid of the bracket, it's up to you. Divide by that, it's up to you. 6.42 to the exponent of x is equal to 32. 2 raised to the power of x. So for this to give us a 32, remember I talked about the powers having the same basis, the powers will be the same also, the exponents. So ask yourself, which base, I mean, this 32 in the base of 2 is going to be raised to which power? It's 2 to the power of what? Which will give us a 32. So that's to the power of 5. 2 times 2, 5 times. So 2 raised to the exponent of 2 is 32. So you can even try on your calculator until you get a 32. In the base of what? In the base of 2. Knowing that these bases to be equal, as we can see, to be the same, it means these powers are also the same. So therefore, x is equal to 5. From the same bases, our exponents will be equal also. So that is, we're done. 6.5, we are given that Johnny has got 50 cents. So this is the condition. Uh, Johnny has 50 cents and one rand coins in his pocket. Together, he has got 20 coins in total. All right, together he has what? 20 coins. That is, that's a statement on its own. Then in total, the amount of money is 12 rand. Okay, so there we've got two things to consider. Write down an algebraic equation. Take note, we are supposed to formulate an algebraic equation and determine the number of what? The number of 50 cents and one rand coins that John has in his pocket. So our equation is supposed to be formulated in terms of the 50 rand, uh, the 50 cents and the one rand coins that he has. Our statement is supposed to be from these. Okay, so we can just uh, have an assumption. Remember, we can write this in uh, this 50 cents that we are seeing is same as 0, 0,5 rand. Remember money, guys, the cents you divide by 100. So many say it's the same as 0 0.50 rent, which is same as what? 0 0.5. We just have, we must have the same unit. If you are using cents, you can write this uh, one rent in cents, which is 100 cents. It's up to you. Then you use that as 50 cents. So the way that you're going to simplify again is in your hands, or you can just have it in terms of these 50 cents in rand, which is 0, 0.5. So we are saying he has a total together these, there are 20 coins, the 50 cent coins and the 100 coins together combined. So we do not know what is representing this, but we are told that they are 20. So what is going to be the statement that we are going to use for that? to give us a 20, 20 coins. So it means if we add these 50 cents coins together, let's say they, let's say it's X. I want you to say something. Let's say they are X of them. They are X 50 cents coins and they are Y one rent coins. So if we add X plus Y, we must get a total of 20 coins. These are number of coins like we have got the 50 cents coins. They are X, we do not know. The one rent coins, they are Y of them. So if we add, you must get a 20. Then in terms of the money, which is now the value now, in total, the amount, the amount now, we are now considered, since we said each is considered as 0, 0.5, but we do not know, like we just consider as X. So it means if you multiply this 0, 0.5 times X, that is the total, like let's say, uh, I want you to understand guys, this one. Let's say you've got uh, one red coin. There are three of them. Uh, what is going to be your total? One red coin, and there are three. So it is going to be one red times three. 
because there are three of them. So it's one plus one plus one, three times. So simply you multiply by three, okay? If there are four, you multiply by a four. If there are five, you multiply by five. But in this case, we are saying these 100 coin, they are represented by Y. So if they are Y, how many, how much are we going to have? I mean, how much? So it's simply one times Y, which is Y. It was supposed to be one Y. Whatever that you get, you multiply to one. So it is the same thing here on the 50 cents coins. How many are we having? Like in terms of the total, how much are we going to have in terms of the total? We do not know. But we are saying they are eggs, each of them being 0 0.5 in terms of the rand. And they are X of them. So you multiply by X like this. If you've got uh, a 50 cents coin and maybe there are two of them, you multiply by two. If they are three, you multiply by three. What if they are X? You multiply by X. So it's 0 0.5 times X, meaning to say in terms of how much he has, we are going to have 0 0.5 X plus the one rand coins. As we saw, if you multiply one times Y there, it is just going to be a Y which is equal to the total amount that he has. Since we are behaving, like how much is he having in total? We must equate this to the total amount that he has. So we have formed an e equation. The first one, it was an equation that we formed in terms of the number of coins. There are X coins representing 50 cents. They are Y coins representing 100. So you just add, equate them to 20. But in terms of the man, you must multiply to say X times the, the 50 cents coins, which is the 0 0.5. Y times the 100, it must give us that total. So that's an equation. So remember the question is, we are asked to determine the number of the 50 cents coins. So by finding X and Y, we are determining the number of the 50 cents coins and the number of the 100 coins. So we just need to calculate what is the value of X. So what are we going to do? Uh, remember from the additive concept, there is a Y here and also a Y that we have. To get a zero from this, what are we going to do? We are supposed to subtract Y minus Y, that's a zero. So we are going to subtract these equations so that we obtain a zero in place of Y there. So let's subtract. This is 1x. So 1x minus 0, 0,5x. It's 1 minus 0, 0,5, which is what? Which is 0, 0,5x. Y minus y, that's we have eliminated. We have removed the part of y is no longer there. So this is equal to 20 minus a 12. So you're going to subtract, and that was going to give us uh, 8. So 0, 0,5 is equal to 8. 0, 0,5x is equal to... So it's a product that we have here. How are you going to get rid of that? Just divide by 0, 0,5. You have got calculators, guys. Use your calculator. You obtain uh, the part of x. So 8 divided by 0, 0,5 was going to give you a 16. Just like that. So x is representing what? x, remember there, is the, uh, the, the 50 cents coins, X, the 50 cents. So it means there are 16 50 cents coins that we, we have there. Okay? The 50 cents coins, they are equal to 16 because X represents those coins. But what about the one red coins? Remember, those are the ones represented by Y. So you must solve for Y again. Like I said before, if you are given two equations like this, using this concept, you can substitute the value that you just calculated now, this one of X, in any of these two equations. So I'm going to take this first equation, X plus Y, since it is equal to 20. I have now the value of X. Remember, I just calculated it. I have it. It's 16. So let me put that value of x where x is. I substitute that. So what is going to be the value of y? That's the question. So you can solve that. So y is equal to what? Take the 16 to the other side. 
it crosses or it jumps the equal sign, it becomes a minus on that side. So y is going to be a 4. So meaning to say y representing, y remember it represents the one rent coins. So it means in terms of the one rent coins, they are equal to 4. There are 4 of them. There are 4. So if we are to consider that statement where we are told that together he has 20 coins, let's see, there are 16 coins in this case, 16 50 cents coins, and there are also 4 coins represent the 100. So let's add 16 plus uh, 4, that's 20 coins. As you can see, this statement is actually true to say he has 20 coins. He has got 16 50 cents coins and four one rent coins. Together, they are 20. This is the statement that you're given, which we are actually proving. So to understand the equations of this nature, do revise also as many problems of this nature of the word problems. They're like, wait, these are word problems. It's a, it's a, you are given a certain statement that you must formulate from there, you must form an equation from a statement. You write an algebraic equation from a statement that you are given. After writing that algebraic equation, you must solve that equation. So let's revise as much questions as we can. But these are the typical questions that you might have uh, in your exams. So that's uh, let's work with more as much as we can.